Mr. Speaker, members, in Article 6, Section 4 of the Texas Constitution, the people of Texas delegated their constitutional authority to the legislature to make all laws necessary to detect and punish fraud and preserve the purity of the ballot box. And the legislature shall provide by law for the regulation of all voters. House Bill 6, also known as Election Integrity Protection Act of 2021, or Senate Bill 7, now also known as the Election Integrity Protection Act of 2021, contains six articles. Article 1 of this bill provides that the purpose of this bill is to exercise the legislature's constitutional authority. Section 1.03, Subdivision 3, says that reforms are needed to the election laws of this state to ensure that fraud does not undermine the public confidence in the electoral process. To that end, Section 1.04 of the bill requires the conduct of our elections and the election code to be applied uniformly and consistently throughout this state. It further provides that public officials, which means anyone elected, selected, appointed, or employed by this state, an agency of this state, or a political subdivision of this state, shall be strictly construed. Article 2 begins with a provision that seeks to ensure that our voter rolls are accurate. That's done by requiring that local registrars send the abstract of deceased voters to the Secretary of State no later than seven days after the abstract is prepared, and it clarifies that spoiled ballots be properly tracked and recorded. In the third article, we ensure that poll watchers are permitted to observe the conduct of an election and report any potential irregularities or violations to the election officers. It protects watchers from being improperly excluded or removed, and it makes it a crime for an election officer to refuse to accept a watcher. Ms. Gonzalez, for what purpose? Will the, will the author yield for some questions? The gentleman yield for questions? Yes. The gentleman yields. Uh, Mr. Kane, uh, why did you file this bill again? Well, I, I, I filed this bill to, you know, ensure that we have an equal and, and uniform um, application of our election code and to, and to protect people from being taken advantage of. And, and, and what is your main purpose behind this bill? Well, the, the main purpose of this bill is to protect every single voter in Texas. Uh, was there a specific incident, event, or a crime that you, that you witnessed um, in your time as a candidate or a voter that prompted for you to file this bill? No, ma'am. But I believe that, that all voters deserve to have their right to vote to be protected. Or in the time that we, the hours we spent in elections committee, did anybody give a, an actual example of these things occurring in the state of Texas to warrant this bill? Um, I believe there was a lot of people in testimony that gave e examples of things. Like examples that were, that were, that had data behind them, actual data, not just something that they heard. Okay, well, I think we observed witnesses talking about how they themselves were excluded um, from places that they were you know, duly appointed uh, to be watchers at, yes. Based on credible data, based on actual well, they, facts they can point to. When they filled out their witness affirmation form, they took a, a sworn oath under, under penalty of perjury, so I think I would trust what they had to say. And do you agree with the Secretary of State uh, when they testified in, in our committee um, that we have free, fair, and safe elections? I mean, I think the, the goal is to have free, fair, and safe elections. I'm sorry? I mean, that, that is the purpose, and that's exactly what this bill seeks to do. No, I, I said, do you agree with me? Because the Secretary of State's office testified before our committee that very first day, and the Secretary of State said that this, the 2020 elections was free, fair, safe, and secure. Do you not agree with that, with, with, the, with what the Secretary of State said? I, I, I think that... That that's their opinion, sure. That you think what? I, I believe that that's their opinion. That's their opinion. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, I, yeah, I think for the most part it was, it was free, fair, and safe, yeah. Okay. But we, I, we heard testimony that, that said otherwise. But if the Secretary of, I mean, the Secretary of State's office was there for a reason, and so I would well, they're, imagine they're, they're that, that their opinion would be highly regarded, that our elections were safe and secure. Okay. Uh, do, are, do you disagree with the I've, Secretary I mean, of State's heard, office? I've heard people say that they, they disagree with the Secretary of State's office and committee, so... So are you saying that you disagree with the Secretary of State's office is what I'm asking you? Um, I mean, I, I think they're probably right in the, in the adding up of it all from what they saw, that so, we had a free, 
fair and, and secure election. So as of right now, our, our elections are safe and secure, correct? What this bill seeks to do is to make them safer and more secure. I'm asking you, I'm, I'm asking you. I mean, if the Secretary of State's office said that, and you said that you, you agree with them, right? That currently, okay. as our elections are right now, they're safe and secure. I'm just trying to figure out what the purpose of, of, of this legislation is if Secretary of State has said that our elections were already safe and secure, and you're agreeing with the Secretary of State. Well, the purpose of this is to make it even more safe and secure. You know, the, the Constitution commands the legislature to, to pass legislation to detect and punish fraud and preserve the purity of the ballot box. And, I, and I've seen a lot of polling. I think we'd all agree that, that people's trust in the electoral process is down. So if it's not broken, then what, what are we trying to fix? I mean, that old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Well, you know, every session we see omnibus election bills filed, and, and, and this, is, this is no different. We're here to, to clean things up. It's a patchwork system, and we want to clarify. We want, we want to restore trust to the, the voters so that they have confidence in the outcome of their election so that they, they trust the laws we make. I mean, I'm just trying to understand. I mean, because I know that, you know, in, in you know, the last two terms that I've served in the legislature, and one of the first questions that you get asked, right, when you file a bill, is what, what are you trying to accomplish? What is the intent? What are you trying to fix? What happened that you're trying to fix? And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. That's what we've, we've been trying to figure out in the elections committee every week when we meet. Um, and so I'm just, that's all I'm simply asking is that uh, what are we trying to fix here that is not broken? Okay, would you like me to finish laying the bill out? We can discuss some of that. Um, I'd like you to answer my question, please. Okay, well, I think we'll get to that if you let me finish the bill out. The layout. I can, I'll probably answer more of those questions. Well, uh, well you did yield to some questions, so um, I would like to continue my questions. Well, I, I happen to believe that, you know, we don't need to wait for, for bad things to happen in order to try and protect and secure these elections and to make sure that this is a process that, that everyone's following. Okay. Um, so before bringing this bill to the floor, um, and I know we've a this question was asked um, in, in, in committee as well, um, did you ever take the opportunity to speak any, uh, to any of the minority groups like MALDEF, NAACP, to get their feedback um, in regards to the language um, that you laid out in committee before us? Uh, yes, uh, we, 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 I've spoken to, I can't remember his name, in, in the hall, and I've actually read some proposed amendments uh, yesterday from the NAACP. And okay, so you were able to discuss their concerns and, and, and you know, maybe you know, make some changes to the bill? Um, Actually, one of the amendments that we have was, was based off of some suggestions from the NAACP that, that I would like to lay out soon. Um, uh, before bringing HB6 or I guess SB7 um, to the floor, uh, did, you go, did you or the AG's office perform um, any analysis about how this bill might affect uh, minority voters? No, no, I hadn't done that. I'm not sure if the Attorney General's office did that. So you didn't consult with him um, well, no, in regards to what this no. effect, the effect of this bill would have on people of color in Texas. Yeah. I mean, Texas does have a history, a, 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 a history of discrimination. Um, and so I would just imagine that's an, an, important, an important question to ask. I mean, this, this bill affects every single person in Texas, every person who's an eligible voter. Yeah, look, this bill is designed to protect all people, regardless of, of the color of their skin or their age or, or their abilities. To protect them from a problem that doesn't exist, right? Well, most of this bill is designed, and it's, and it's targeted at um, those who conduct our elections, not at, not at people, not at the voters. Okay. Did, did you talk to any of the civil rights organizations, like a ACLU? Were they included in those conversations as well? Um, you know, during the committee process, and, and several of the bills that are, um, we've passed through this chamber and, and passed out of that committee are also in, included in this bill. And we took testimony from them. And, and in fact, uh, I mean, we would point to the exact organization, but we've got some amendments that, that I'm ready to get going on that, you know, that reduce crimes, um, some that, that add elements of mens rea to make sure that we have the specific intent requirements of some of these things. That, and that came from hearing testimony in committee from, from organizations like the ACLU and, um, and the Civil Rights Project and others. Yeah, it was very valuable and helpful. 
Okay. Uh, did you talk to any attorneys about this bill? Members of the AG's office today, in the back hallway? I, I, I did not talk to anyone from the Attorney General's office today. Um, okay, can you ex explain the major differences between the original version of the bill? It's the exact, right, it's the exact same version of um, HB6, right? You, mo you modified it when you did the substitute. Yes, um, the committee substitute for House Bill 6, which was you know, passed out of our committee, um, is identical to, uh, to the, the House committee report of, of Senate Bill 7 that's before us right now. And in your, your opinion, how did um, our first hearing go on, on that bill? The first hearing? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It was a bummer we didn't get to finish it. Kind of slowed things down. Yeah. Um, and how long, uh, how long do we have, I'm not going to tell you. Um, after you, no, no, hold on a second. Uh, in your time in the House, uh, have you ever witnessed um, a, a, a chairman or a speaker uh, stop a vote uh, before calling the question, or after calling the question? Have I seen someone call the question? Mm -hmm. I'm referring to our, our committee hearing where um, we got the substitute a minute before we had to vote. Um, you called the question, the vote wasn't completed. Why, why did that occur? Um, why did it occur? Well, I, you know, I, I think it, it occurred because... Because you, it would have you, failed? You would, you would express some, you know, con concerns and things, and, and, and other members had, and so I thought it was the right thing to do. Because it was going to fail, correct? Um, I did, you know, I disagree with that, but that's okay. All right. Um, after 22 hours of testimony, uh, uh, where leaders of the NAACP and MALDA disability rights um, pleaded to the committee about how your bill uh, would suppress their vote. Um, did that factor into uh, your desire at all before bringing this bill to the floor today? I'm trying to understand. Did well, I mean, we heard, we heard, I mean, we heard more people testify against the bill than on the bill. And so, you know, if we're, if, if our job is to pass legislation that um, for our state, for our constituents, we're, we're here to pass policy that they want not force legislation on them that they don't agree with. I, it, it's okay if I, I disagree with some of the witnesses that, that come to the committee. I, I don't believe um, that this bill suppresses any votes. In fact, I, I think it's, it's designed to, to help all voters. And, and, if, and if, if we thought this was suppressing votes, um, I, I wouldn't have voted for it or, or written in it. I don't think any other members on that committee would have voted for it. Well, I mean, there were legal experts that have done work, um, uh, you know, voting rights work for years uh, that argue before the Supreme Court that, that would say otherwise. Um, okay. I, I think we've consulted others that, that disagree, and, and that's, that's what this chamber so does. So the, the, the long history of discrimination in Texas just doesn't exist anymore? Or it's I, never existed in your opinion? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm not saying that at all. Discrimination is a disgusting thing, and I don't think a, a single member that voted for this bill or I would have, would have written it or drafted it if we thought it was discriminating against anybody. Well, in effect, it discriminates against people. I mean, that, that is something that you weigh in when, when you bring legislation and you force it on Texans. It's gonna disproportionately impact people of color. You have to understand the damage that you're causing I disagree. I think this. Is so you disagree with somebody who is disabled, who's, who's, you know, pleading to you and saying that it's going to be more difficult for them to go vote. You're going to say, "Oh, I, I don't believe you," even though you're the one that's disabled. Well, one of the amendments that that, that I've filed um, was actually from working with a with a disability organization, and we're literally doing every single thing they wanted, except for one. We're writing it slightly different, and so we did take that into consideration. And and we, when I when we, we had drafted it even during committee. We heard it, and I said, oh, you know, they're right. And then he came to us, and I know Representative Schofield also met with him. And, and when we get to that point, we're going to explain that again. And, and so the, the hundreds point. of people that have testified against or they submitted comments against this bill, you just disagree with all of them, right? That people that have done this for years, legal experts, arguing in front of the Supreme Court on this issue, that have protected the right of people of color, protected their vote for years, you disagree with all, with, with all of these people. 
because you understand what voter suppression looks like, right? I, I, I disagree that it, that it does that, yeah. So you disagree with these experts that have said otherwise? I suppose you could say. They have challenged these things in court and have been proven by, by the Supreme Court of having that effect. I believe that, you know, um, that it's incumbent on the Texas legislature to, to improve the electoral process for all Texans. And that's so it's what incumbent I believe upon the legislature to enact laws that are going to help the people of Texas. That is our job, not to pass laws that, that are, are, are going to hurt them. So that's what I'm trying to find out from you, that is why would we want to do that? Well, um, I, I don't think this is, is voter suppression. I believe it's voter enhancement. I think this, this bill seeks to improve things for all Texans. And so it's, it's expanding participation. More people are going to be able to vote as a result of this bill. Yeah, we're protecting voters to ensure that no one's taken advantage of. Yeah. How is that increasing participation? By adding more restrictions and criminalizing minor things, mistakes that somebody uh, could make. No, I don't think this bill at all criminalizes minor mistakes. No, no, it doesn't do that. It doesn't criminalize somebody for making a simple mistake. It does not. I mean, That's I, I, don't, I, I guess you don't do. recall the, the testimony that was elicited from the AG's office and how they're going to enforce this bill, and some of it sounds really scary. I um, mean, it and, and could affect every single person in this room who runs for office when we run for re-election. Yeah, I understand. I, I think from the testimony. And so we're though, willing to 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 to. to for people to put their to put their spouses in a position who may be helping them block walk or pull greet that and this is slippery slope there they could potentially be accused of of, of illegal voter assistance um, simply because they're trying to help their loved one um, get reelected. Can you explain to me what what section or page number in the bill would do that? I don't have the bill in front of me, but I can come back with the question. But there Please was see. testimony uh, uh, that I asked the attorney general. Um, in regards to the, the, def the definition within the code that defines someone who is assisting to have some kind of benefit. So for example, um, let's say my colleague here, uh, uh, Gina Hinojosa, that she has her husband on her, her health insurance. That's, that, that seemingly is a benefit because he's getting a health insurance benefit. Now if he's helping her get reelected, that could potentially, he could potentially be committing a crime under the way the, way the bill is written. And the AG's what, office what said that. What section is that? The AG's office said that. We need that. to fix that. What section does that? I mean, I could find it, but it's in there. And that's pretty scary. Please do. That's, that's pretty scary. Please do. I, if someone's going to get in trouble for being on, on their spouse's insurance while they're standing polls. Um, but that's what your bill does. Fix that. And, 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 you Could you know, show we, that to me? I definitely will. Okay. I, I really, I don't, I don't see it. I, and, and I guess that's why we're here. I'm not seeing that. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.